Brad Johnson here from Johnson.audio, and today I'm going to discuss UAD versus Waves plugins. Now, UAD is Universal Audio. Universal Audio is a company that's been around since the 40s, created by Bill Putnam Sr., and they have made consoles, they have created hardware, and they have definitely changed the game for the better for the recording industry for a long time. Now, Waves has been around since the early 90s, and they're a company that built the first plugin for the modern era. So they have both changed the recording industry for the better, and they have awesome pedigree. So I don't, I do not want this video to turn into, well, this company is great and this company is horrible, and you should only look at this company and totally forget about that company. This is not that kind of video. I just want to let you know that I have had experience with both Waves and Universal Audio, and this is my experience. Now there are other plugin manufacturers out there that are definitely worth their salt, but I'm not going to get into those right now because this is about Waze and Universal Audio, which I do think are the two most hotly debated companies. Now let's move on. Universal Audio, there's something you need to know about them right out the gate, and that is that you do need external hardware to use their plugins. You either need one of their interfaces, a PCIe card, or a Universal Audio satellite to run their plugins. So there is an upfront investment before you can even begin to use their plugins. With Waves, you can just go on their website, you can buy one of their plugins, download it, and then you can use it. So that's something that you definitely have to consider. Now, to move on, Universal Audio is a company that focuses on modeling vintage hardware from front to back, modeling all the circuitry tubes, transformers, everything. And they work alongside the actual company and they license the name of that company to use for their plugins. So you're going to get an actual Manly Massive Passive or an actual Teletronics LA-2A. And that's kind of the fun about using Universal Audio is it feels like you're actually using the hardware counterpart. And let me tell you, they do sound awesome. I have used real LA-2As. I use Universal Audio's LA-2A, and I say it does sound very, very close. With Waves, they also model analog hardware, but they do go beyond that with very future-forward plugins that are just super creative and there's nothing in the actual physical world that comes close to it. So there's that with Waze. Waze does go a little bit more creative while UAD kind of stays in its lane. Now, I want to talk a little bit about Waze and Universal Audio's marketing. So I feel like this is kind of where you are going to start to see the differences between the two companies and also what's going behind the hood of their actual plugins. Universal Audio works specifically alongside brands. They're working along people that are actually manufacturing the hardware and they're using their name for their plugins. So I believe that they're going to go through a little bit more of a painstaking measure to make sure that their plugins sound as close as the hardware as possible because the brands want to make sure that when people are using those plugins, they're having a good experience not only with Universal Audio, but with their brand. When people go to buy a Manly Massive Passive Universal Audio plugin, they're not only supporting Universal Audio, but they're supporting Manly. So that is something that I feel like is you have to take into consideration. Then you go over to Waze, and you're not going to get a Teletronics LA-2A. You're going to get the Chrysler Algae LA-2A. You're going to get the Chrysler Algae 1176. You're going to start having signature series. You're going to have the Eddie Kramer. You're going to have the Manny Mariquin. So really, when you're buying into some Waze products, you're buying into engineers. And on the Universal Audio side, you're buying into Universal Audio, and you're buying into the brand. And yes, Waze does have the SSL. They do have API. And so there is licensing deals going on there. But I feel like majority of their marketing is focused on the engineer and using the engineer as their mouthpiece. Now, when it comes to sound, I will say right out the gate, I think Universal Audio sounds better than Waze when it comes to the analog modeling plugins. I say that I've used real LA-2As in studios. I've used real 1176s in studios. And honestly, I think that the Chris Lord Algae LA-2A sounds good. When it comes to the 1176, I always felt like it sounded like paper. When I go over to the Universal Audio side of life, I think that the LA-2A sounds so close to the real LA-2A that I used, and I really like the 1176. It actually has that snap and punch that I heard when using a real one in the studio. So that's just kind of my own experience. There are videos out there that will do side-by-side -side comparisons. I'm not saying that the Waves sounds horrible. I just think that compared to UAD, UAD sounds better to my ears. Now, another thing you have to note with Universal Audio because you're using external hardware, you can only use a certain amount of plugins. 
there's DSP involved. So certain plugins take up a lot of DSP. So once you run out of DSP, you can't use any more universal audio plugins. It will not let you do that. With Waze, you can use as much as your computer can handle. So that is something that you should also consider. I kind of like being restricted because it makes me make better mixed decisions. I can't just slap a bunch of plugins on my session and just call it good. I have to kind of think about it and go, okay, well, I'm running out of DSP. Do I really need to use this plugin or can I use a different plugin? And overall, I think it just helps me make better mixed decisions. It's also nice because it makes it so you don't use the same plugin over every single track. That is actually not a good idea when it comes to um, modeled analog hardware because it's adding in different kinds of harmonics. And if you use the same plugin over multiple channels, you're accentuating those harmonics over every channel. You're actually going to get a buildup of energy in that area, which will not help your mix. So it's good to pick and choose and only use a plugin every once in a while on certain tracks. And I have digressed. That's a little tip on how to use analog hardware model plugins. It'll help your mixes, but that's just something that you got to think about. Now, I do want to add a quick disclaimer when it comes to this video. Neither way is your UAD is going to make your mixes better. Your mixes are going to come better by you practicing your craft, by getting into a session and actually mixing and learning the tools. And you can do that with your stock plugins. I used stock plugins for like the first four or five years of me learning how to do this. Then I worked in a studio that used Waves, and I started learning Waves and realizing, okay, like I like these tools a little bit better. I feel like my mixes are going faster. I feel like I'm getting better results. And then I moved into the Universal Audio platform. So don't think that your mixing deficiencies is because of your plugin library. It does not matter. They are better tools, and they help you, and they're fun to use, but it's not going to change your mixes overnight. So I just want to say that if you're beginning and you're new to this, stick with what you have in your DAW. And one last thing I want to touch on when it comes to universal audio interfaces is that you can actually track through the plugins in real time and print the plugins onto the sound, meaning that you can actually treat it like analog hardware, like you have outboard gear, like you're using a real LA-2A to track vocals. And this is really, really fun. It's just a cool feature that you can do. It also has a thing called Unison Preamps where you can insert a Neve 1073 or an API channel strip or Neve channel strip or a Manly channel strip, and you can actually get the flavor of those preamps with your interface and record through it. And it's pretty, pretty cool. I know that Waves does have sound grid, so they can do low latency um, monitoring when it comes to using plugins, but... I haven't had any experience with it, so I can't speak into it. I just know that I really like the UAD feature with that. So if you got anything out of this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to all my other subscribers. I appreciate your continued support. Leave me a comment below if you want to chime in on this conversation. I know this is a hot topic. I try to keep it as unbiased as possible. I am Brad Johnson. I am here to help you sing your story, mix your mission, and master your message. I will see you in the next video. Bye.